Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Happy Friday everybody, hope your day and your week have been going well so far. We've got a new day which of course means a new NBA player prop video to share with you guys. Got more NBA playoff action coming your way, a solid three game slate for tonight. Now, little statement change, we're not doing our Freaky Friday five leg parlay like we typically do. We're going to push that to tomorrow because tomorrow we have four games in tomorrow's slate. More opportunity, I feel like it's a better chance to do a five leg parlay. A little bit tougher, especially with the same game parlay stuff, um, to do it when you've only got three games. So doing the four games slate tomorrow, I think it's a better opportunity. So we'll go ahead and do our Freaky Friday five leg parlay. We're moving that to tomorrow. So five leg parlay, we'll do it tomorrow's video. Um, for today's video... We have 11 straight props. I'm not doing a parlay today. We're just doing the straight props. I have a lot of props to hand out, of course. You can always take those in the parlay as well. The straight props are meant to be taken however you want them. You want to bet them straight up. You want to put them in a parlay. Whatever you want to do, I will show you guys all the props. 11 props for tonight's slate I'm pretty excited about. But first, as always, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, drop a comment down below, all that good stuff. We are on the road to 100,000 subscribers here on the channel. We just hit 70K this week. If you haven't already, please do us a favor. It doesn't take a lot of effort. Hit that subscribe button down below. Real quick before we get into today's picks, quick little recap of last night. I don't have the graphic for you, unfortunately, for today. Uh, we had nine straight props yesterday. We cashed on five out of nine props. So overall, it was a solid day. We had more hits than we had misses. Although, if you had read the comments yesterday, you would have thought that I went 0-9. We had a couple. So Ed likes to call them guppies, and I do agree with the terminology, but I think there's a level above gu guppies. I'm going to call them clownfish. We had a clownfish in here yesterday. Fittingly, the guy's name, I think, was Bojangles or something. So it kind of matched the, the clownfish theme there. Um... Uh, you know, spam in the comments. If you had read his comments, you would have thought that I had the worst sports betting day of all time, but not bad. Five and four overall. And look, I don't want to go too far into this because I don't like giving people like that the spotlight here. Um, but I am going to I talked about a couple weeks ago with the earthquake parlay. We had that guy a couple weeks ago who had kind of a similar thing. Um, look, I'm all cool with, with with criticism. I think it's important in any every aspect of life. Criticism is important, especially if it's constructive. I learn from it. You guys have actual critiques. I try to learn from it and get better from it. Um, but there's a fine line between being critical and being a dickhead. And yes, I'm gonna maybe use a little profanity here. Um, but the guy took it a little too far. Was being a bit of a dickhead. Start off with just criticism, which is fine. But then he just started spamming, and that's the one thing I'm not gonna say. spam. And then when you're just taking shots at me as a as a person, uh, my work ethic, all that stuff. That's when it's like, all right, you know what, pal? Comments are getting turned off for you. Like we're not. I'm not having this. So just be respectful in the comments. The funniest part about this guy too. Not to, I don't want to spend too much time on this guy. I want to get into today's video. But it's so funny because his, he was so pissed off because of my Embiid prop yesterday over 10.5 rebounds, which, to be fair to him, to give him his roses, he was correct. It was a it was wrong pick that he didn't cover. But his whole reason why he was mad and he called me a lazy slob and a snowflake and all these things is because I bet on an injured player. Hey, pal, that injured player who you said was a ho I was betting on a hobbling player, he had 50 points last night. So, yes, I understand the prop that I handed out lost, but your whole methodology of why it was a bad pick – was just shot right through because that hobbling injured guy who we were like was a terrible pick, he had 50 points last night. So you were also wrong. You were right and you were wrong. I'll give you your roses for that, but you were wrong. He had 50 points. Let's just be respectful in the comments. That's all I'm saying. You can critique me. You can even be a hater. I don't care. You can say my picks suck or whatever. Uh, it's when you start, dude, don't call me a lazy slob, but there's one thing that I'm not. It's not lazy. I wake up in the morning. I do this for two, three hours. I work for 10, 12 hours a day, and then I play sports at night. I play between soccer and basketball three, four nights a week. Uh, the one thing I'm not is lazy. Meanwhile, you're at home doing this all day, so I don't want to hear it. Like I said, guys, let's be respectful in the comments. Again, I can take a hit. No problem with that. Um, but it, there's there's a fine line between being critical and being a dick. Let's not be a dick, guys. All right. As Forrest Gump says uh, in the movie, that's all I have to say about that. Let's dive into today's video. All right, guys. Starting off our first prop from today's slate. Let me switch over to the Outlier screen real quick. Outlier, guys, it is the best sports betting tool on the market. As always, there is a link in the description below. You get a seven-day free trial to check it out for yourself. Outlier truly is the best sports betting tool on the market. Um... All right, so Milwaukee Bucks, Indiana Pacers, 5.30 p.m. tip-off. We're going Pascal Siakam, over 41.5 points, plus rebounds, plus assists. And look, if you've been watching my playoff videos, you're going to hear me say it over and over again. The data doesn't look great as front, up front, but there's a reason why we're taking this. And look at the head-to-head -head matchup here. In both games in this series so far, he has ca cashed this over with flying colors. He nearly cashed his line just in points alone in Game 1 and Game 2. And look, I understand. Look at the line. It's at minus uh, 115 on DraftKings. It's available on every sportsbook, though. 
And look, I'm going to keep betting it because the matchup is far too great. As long as Giannis is out in this series, I'm going to keep using Siakam here. He has the highest usage percentage of any player on the Pacers, a 32% usage percentage in this series so far. Halliburton, we bet on him the other day. I already told you guys I'm not betting on him anymore. It's very clear that he's not the same player he was in the first half of the season. I don't know if it's an injury thing or just maybe it was a fluke. I don't know, but... Clearly, this is Siakam is the best player on the Pacers right now. If they're going to win this series, it's going to be through Siakam. And Halliburton is sort of his sidekick here. Although, I think we, when they made the trade, we kind of thought it was Halliburton 1, Siakam 2. I think it's Siakam 1, Halliburton 2 right now in terms of the hierarchy of the Pacers. Um, but it's a great matchup. The Bucks do not have a player right now who can match up with Siakam. You've got Brooke Lopez and Bobby Portis kind of guarding him, and they neither of them can handle him. He's been dominating this series. I expect it to be much of the same. This game has a pretty high point total. It's the highest point total um, of any of the playoff games tonight, over under 222. Uh, obviously, the point totals are not going to be as high in the playoffs because you've got better teams, it's a harder defense. Um, but it's the highest point total of today's slate. Vegas is expecting points here. And a lot of those are going to come from Siakam here. The Pacers are six-point favorites tonight. Um, I do expect Siakam to carry here. And cash thought again. Again, I talked about it the other day, uh, yesterday's video actually. Like, you see these high caches. We don't need him to do that. Like, he had 54 points, rebounds, plus assists yesterday on the game two. We don't need that. If he Even if you slice 10 off of that, he still caches. So as long as he's even in the ballpark of where he's been in this series, I feel pretty good about the bet. All right, guys, second prop of today's slate. We're sticking with this pacers Bucks game for a little bit. We're going Damian Lillard over 37.5 points plus assists. We're getting this for minus 120 on DraftKings, but it's available on every sportsbook for a multitude of odds. Again, the data is not going to be great at first glance, although the last five game data is a 60% hit rate for Lillard. But most importantly, both games in this series so far, he has cashed his over. Now, it's been very close in both games, but he has cashed the under, none the, I mean the over, excuse me, nonetheless. Similar to Siakam, his usage rate is the highest on the Bucks, over 35%. And also, you had no Giannis, obviously. And then you also have the fact that Middleton is now banged up. Now, Middleton should play. I know Giannis is so his game-time decision, but he is doubtful tonight. I don't think Giannis comes back tonight. Um, but Middleton is the game-time decision. He has been practicing, which is not a good sign from him. Uh, with no middle, with Middleton dinged up and Giannis obviously out, Lillard is the Bucks right now. He's all they really have to rely on. And look, the Pacers are a great matchup defensively versus point guards. Um... Although, right here, it shows they're actually good, which makes no sense because the Pacers versus point guards have been one of the worst teams most of the year. I know they improved the later half of the year, but uh, the Pacers are not a great defensive team versus point guards. They were one of the worst in the league for the majority of the season. Uh, you see there the Pacers overall, they are a bottom three defensive team in the NBA this year. Uh, I think Lillard continues to take advantage of the matchup. I don't think Halliburton can match up with Lillard when he's playing like this. Lillard will continue to keep team carry here, and I expect him to have another big game tonight for the Bucks. By the way, just because some people, like, even that same guy, I keep going back to Bojangles, but he said that the data doesn't even support my pick sometimes. This is Damian Lillard this year without Giannis, an 80% hit rate without Giannis. He's averaging 37.7 points plus assists per game this year when Giannis is out. So 80% hit rate, that includes game one and game two, obviously. Uh, but still, the only twice this year has he failed to cash the over when uh, Giannis is out, and that's versus Orlando and versus Cleveland. Um, two really good defensive teams and tough matchups. So really good data here. Uh, for Lillard. All right, guys, third prop overall. Again, we're just sticking with this Bucks pacers game. Bobby Portis under 11.5 rebounds here. Now, he has cashed this in nine of his last 10 games, a 92% hit rate this year. Now, to add context, obviously the minutes played here factors in. He has averaged uh, twenty about just shy of 25 minutes per game. He's obviously playing more because Giannis is out. But looking at the head-to-head -head matchup here, you see each of the last 10 times he's faced off with Indiana, including both game one and game two, he has cashed the under. He's averaging 7.7 .7 rebounds per game versus the Pacers. And again, game one and game two, they were close calls. He had 11 rebounds in both games. Is it dangerous? Absolutely dangerous to take it, but I take it nonetheless. And you see here, he's had some big minute games here, 33 minutes. Those were back, obviously, uh, last season. But even those bigger minute games, he still cashes the under. And the Pacers are a pretty decent rebounding team. Overall, they are middle of the road in both power forward and center forward. And center forward, power forward and center. But Siakam and Miles Turner are playing a ton of minutes as long as they're on the court. I just don't see Bobby Portis getting a ton of rebounds. And just to show you guys, even when Giannis is out, you see here an 82% hit rate for Bobby Portis this year when Giannis is out. 9 out of 11 games without Giannis this season, he's cashed the, the under. He's averaging 10.27 rebounds per game without Giannis because he's got a couple of big ones there versus the Clippers and versus the Celtics there. Um, you know, he's got a couple of bigger rebounding games. But overall, you see he still cashes the under pretty consistently, even without Giannis. There are a lot of close calls. He gets pretty close a lot of the time. But at this 11.5 rebound line, it's a pretty surefire bet. All right, guys, our fourth and final prop from this Bucks pacers game. We're going with Chris Milton, under 31.5 points plus rebounds plus assists. Um, 
again, we're just he's hobbled. Obviously, he's a game time decision. He's probably going to play with a back injury, but he hasn't been practicing. He is dinged up. He's a little bit older. Um, you know, I just my thing here is if he's dinged up, I I feel more comfortable betting his under than betting his over. Now I know the Bucks rely on him heavily, especially uh, with Giannis out, but. Uh, he did cash this under in game two. He had 15 points, five rebounds, and six assists. Uh, he did cash it the over in game one. He had a really good game one for the Bucks. But overall, you see the head-to-head rankings here. Seven of his last nine games versus the Pacers, dating back to last year, he has cashed the under. He's averaging 28.89 points plus rebounds plus assists per game versus the Pacers. And on the year so far, a 77% hit rate. He's been dinged up most of the year. But, hey, the data is the data. And although the percentage does drop without Giannis, it's still a 56% hit rate this year when Giannis does not play, uh, averaging 27 points plus rebounds plus assists per game this year without Giannis. All right, guys, switching gears now to the Clippers-Mavs game, 8 p.m. tip-off. Comment 11 down below if you're watching this far into the video. As always, guys, I appreciate you guys stick around and watching this far uh, into the video. You guys are the best, especially the people who were, who were kind of coming to my defense yesterday in the comments. Really do um, appreciate you guys there. Uh, but here we go. Uh, fifth prop overall in today's slate. Our first prop from this Clippers Mavs game. We're going PJ Washington over 17 and a half points plus rebounds here. And again, data's decent up front. Eight of his last 10 games, he's cast the over. But the big reason why I like this spot here is the head to head data. You see here the first two games of this series, he cashed them pretty consistent, pretty convincingly, excuse me. Um, in game two, he had 18 points and six rebounds. In game one, he had 11 points and seven rebounds. Clippers, although versus centers are really good defensively versus power forwards, not so much. Middle of the road in both points and rebounds allowed to opposing power forwards here. And also, uh, when you add the fact for the Mavs that Gafford is a game time decision, uh, he obviously hurt his back in the last game. Uh, it's questionable to see if he'll even play. And if he does play, he's obviously going to be uh, dinged up there. So I like the spot for Washington. He's going to get plenty of minutes in this matchup here. It's a pretty solid matchup overall. The line's elevated now because he's cashed it in these last two games. But the data's strong all year long. Again, a 55% hit rate um, on the season for Washington, 41 out of 75 games. And by the way, guys, this is a filter to show P.J. Washington when he plays between 34 and 40 minutes per game. Now in the game one and game two, um, you go ahead and look at the minutes played. He played in game two. He played 35 minutes in game one. He played 37 minutes. Uh, so he played pretty high minutes. He's averaging 30, uh, there you go, 35.6 minutes in those games when he plays between 34 and 40 minutes per game. Uh, you see an 80% hit rate, 20 out of 25 games. He's averaging 22.76 points per game in this range of data where he plays between 34 and 40 minutes. All right, guys, our second prop from this game, our sixth prop overall. We are more than halfway there now. Uh, we got Russell Westbrook of the Clippers over 11.5 points plus rebounds. Again, we're going to get from minus 115 on DraftKings, but it is available almost uh, everywhere. And I just love betting this Russ line here. Eight of his last ten games, he's cashed the over. He's cashed it in game one and game two versus the Mavs. You look at the head-to-head -head data here. All five games this year versus the Mavericks, he has cashed the over. He's averaging 18 points plus rebounds per game. If you scroll down to the minutes played, obviously there is a little bit of change in minutes, but not too much. He's averaging 23.3 minutes per game versus Dallas, and that's what he's been getting the first two games of the series, 23 and 24 minutes. Russ just, he's, he's in the perfect role at this point in his career. He just comes off the bench, he plays hard for, for the 20-something minutes he's in, and he gets this line. So I like the spot here. The Mavs, obviously, they are bottom 10 in both points allowed and rebounds allowed overall. And versus point guard, they're actually not bad, but Russ still takes advantage of the match. I don't think Kyrie Irving can hang with Russell Westbrook right now. So really solid line. On the year, a 77% hit rate for Russ. 54 out of 70 games this year, he has cashed this over. Oh, and by the way, when Russ plays between 20 and 25 minutes per game this year, he's 100% hit rate. 16 out of 16 games. He's averaging 16.63 points plus rebounds per game. This is if he plays a minimum of 20 and a maximum of 25. All the games in that range of 20 to 25 minutes. This is the hit rate. It looks really, really good. All right, guys, our seventh prop overall, our third prop from this game. We got Paul George over 24.5 points plus assists. Look, he's available on almost every sports book. We're going to get from minus 102 on DraftKings and FanDuel. Uh, the data, pretty good. Overall, 66% hit rate on the season for Paul George. Look at the head-to-head -head data here. 71% hit rate, including he cashed in both game one and game two versus the Mavs. Uh, five of his last seven games overall versus Dallas. He has cashed this over here. And you look at the Mavs' numbers versus shooting guard and small forward. Both sides of it not very good defensively. Uh, and Paul George, like I said, here's the thing with this series, right? Kawhi's obviously banged up. We're going to talk about him in a second. Um, you know, James Harden, we know what James Harden is, right, with the playoffs. His, I mean, he's been playing decent so far in this series. But we just kind of know what James Harden does in the playoffs. It just feels like if the Clippers are going to win this series, 
Paul George is going to have to be the guy who carries him because Kawhi is clearly is not healthy enough to do it. It feels like this is Paul George or bust for the Clippers at this point, and I just feel like he is a really good player. I think he will be able to rise to the occasion somewhat. I do personally think the Mavericks are going to win this series, uh, but I do think Paul George shows out here uh, in Game Three again. I think he's really their their best hope of winning these games. I think he, you know, obviously big offseason coming up for him. Uh, he's got a lot to prove. Whether he stays at the Clippers or goes somewhere else, he's got something to prove here. Playoff P, I don't know. I do like the spot here. I think Paul George will rise to the occasion. He cashed it, He's cashed it the first two games of this series here. Um, it's a pretty solid defensive matchup here. And again, with Kawhi clearly not looking 100%, um, I like the spot for Paul George. All right, guys, our eighth prop overall, our fourth prop from this game. We're going Eva Kazubach over 11.5 rebounds plus assists. Look, this is an easy play here. I have to take it. He has cashed it eight of his last 10 games, including both game one. And game two, we talked about already, Gafford uh, is is not healthy. He may not even play tonight. But even if he does, now the Mavericks overall, they've been pretty good in rebounds and assists allowed. But Zubac in the first two games of the series has absolutely owned Daniel Gafford. And so whether Gafford plays or not, uh, Zubac has absolutely dominated the first two games of the series versus them. And I think he'll continue to do that here. Um, he'll probably cash assists and rebounds alone, but it's okay to throw the assists in there. You know, he did get one assist in game one, so it does help us a little bit. But you see here, uh, pretty good eight of his last 10 games. You go to his last 20 games, um, 11 of his last 20. So I think Zubac continues to eat here uh, in this matchup. All right, guys, our ninth prop overall, our fifth prop from this game. We're going Kawhi Leonard under 31.5 points plus rebounds plus assists. Again, kind of the same mentality with the, with the Chris Middleton bet here. He's obviously not healthy. I watched his performance in game two. He does not look right. And with that being said, I'm just going to bet the under here. I think it's the safe play here. Um, again, I think if they're going to win this series, it's going to be through Paul George. He did cash this line in game two. He had 15.7 rebounds and two assists. And, uh, you know, matchup-wise, I mean, this is a matchup where – you would think he would have success. And head-to-head, -head, he actually has. He's cashed the under in just three of his last seven games versus Dallas. But, again, with the injury concerns there, I just have to take the under here. You know, if I get burned here, I get burned. But I just genuinely, like, I watched that game, too. He did not look right. Like, he clearly looks like he's uncomfortable. He looks like he's hurt. I don't know if he's going to be able to just find it. Like, I just, I, I feel more, more comfortable taking the under here on an injured guy. And just after seeing what I saw in game two, I feel a lot more comfortable betting the under here with Kawhi. Again, if they're going to win this series, I think Paul George is going to be at the forefront. I don't think Kawhi is going to be the one to lead them there. Um, hopefully he heals up, and maybe I'm wrong, but I'm going to be comfortable here taking the under. All right, guys, final two props of today's slate. We're switching over to the Timberwolves Suns game. I only have two props in this game because I don't really know what to think of this game. I'll be totally honest with you. 10.30 p.m. tip-off. First one, we're going Bradley Beal, under 28.5 points, plus rebounds, plus assists. Um, he has cashed this in both games so far this series, and the data overall in the season is pretty good. You see a 60% hit rate on the year for Bradley Beal, 33 out of 55 games. And the head-to-head -head matchup, three of the last four matchups versus Minnesota, he has cashed the under. He did have that big game right before the start of the playoffs. On April 14th, he had a massive game versus Minnesota. But you see here the previous one before that, cashed the under. Game one and game two, he's cashed the under. Minnesota, they're, they're arguably the best defensive team in the NBA. And versus shooting guards in particular, uh, they have the second-fewest points and the second-fewest assists in the league to opposing shooting guards. This game has the lowest point total of any game in today's slate. Over-under is 207. I just don't see Bradley Beal being the one to step up for the Suns here. I think it's going to be either Booker or Durant. And my 11th and final prop for today's slate. Sticking with this game, we're going to stick with the under here. We're going Jaden McDaniels under 15.5 points plus rebounds. This, to me, is just something you got to do. You fade a guy coming off a big game. You see the data before game two. Nine consecutive caches of this under. This line is where it's at because he had a massive game two. 25 points, eight rebounds. It's an outlier. Shout out Outlier. That game's an outlier, right? I, I'm I'm fading him coming off that big game. Maybe I'll get burned again. Maybe I'm wrong. I just, after a role player like McDaniels, who's a really solid role player, but scoring like that is not really his role, I don't see that happening a lot in this series. I don't see that happening consistently. The Suns, if you see here, they actually are one of the best defensive teams against small forwards in the league. They're top three in both points and rebounds allowed. The game was an outlier. They're in Phoenix on the road. Role players on the road don't usually play as well. I know McDan calling McDaniels a role player feels kind of disrespectful, but it's what he is. He's a role player. I just don't see him doing having another big game. You see on the year a 72% hit rate on this under. And the head-to-head -head data, six of his last nine times, nice playing uh, the Suns. He's cashed the under only a couple times. You see he's cashed it. But this season, leading up to that game two performance, he had cashed in all the games he had played them this year. So I like the spot here for Jaden McDaniels. And all right, guys, that does it for me for me for today's slate of games. Thank you very much as always for watching. One more time, guys, make sure hit the subscribe button, hit that like button, and drop a comment down 
below. As always, I appreciate you guys. Again, appreciate you guys, everything you guys do this community. I know I spent a lot of time talking today about the clownfish, but... You know, I just had to talk about it because I want this to be a good community. I want this to be a respectful community where we can all have a good conversation. Again, you can hate. I think there's a way to hate but still be respectful and hating. I have a couple of guys, Broken Arrow Keys. I always give them a shout out. The guy's one of my biggest haters, but it's with love. And you can tell it's with love. Like, it's not, you know, it doesn't come from a place of, like, he's trying to take a stab at me. You know, you can be critical. I don't really care. You know, if you want to say my picks suck, sometimes they do. Let's be honest, they do. Um, but there's a fine line, again, like, between being critical and being a dick so guys thank you very much love you guys love this community 99.99999 percent of you are awesome just that little small fraction that sometimes take it a little too far but guys that is it for me today i'll see you all tomorrow we got a five leg parlay plus props other props tomorrow until then i hope we're all winners